Now let's get right to Chris Payne, financial advisor, Payne Capital Management. Chris, uh, let's, t you know, Stephanie just mentioned getting labor, right, for the home builders. And we've seen wage growth as a big story. And the question is, you know, it's a metric to watch because it certainly signifi signifies inflation. But it's going to be really hard for these companies that start paying somebody $17 an hour to go back to $12, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, you know, one thing to, to really focus on here is like prices, things don't get less expensive as time goes on. So, you know, as we're going to see wage inflation, you know, companies are going to have to get up to speed and start to have to pay their employees more money just because everybody else is going to be doing it. So, you know, they got to keep pace with that. And then furthermore, you know, a lot of these price increases coming from wage inflation is going to be passed on to the customer. So us as consumers, you know, we're going to be paying more money for things in the future. So that's, you know, why I say that inflation is here to stay. Uh, so we'll have to pay more. Um, if you were on the Fed now, would you be saying to raise rates? Yeah, I, you know, I, and I mentioned this uh, last time I was on your show as well as something we've been talking a lot about on our podcast, The Pain Points of Wealth, is that uh, I was said the, the Fed was going to have to backpedal with regards to how they're going to raise rates, and they already started to. So, you know, one of the things that came out recently was that they said they're going to not only they're going to do two raise rates in 2023, and I think as time goes on, you know, as we start to realize that inflation is in fact not transitory, uh, the Fed is going to have to continue to to revise their statements as to when they're going to start raising rates. Right. So you think the Fed is is pretty much wrong at this time pertaining to inflation. Um, I know you have some names you like, and you're bringing us these today. Let's start with Archer Daniels Midland. Why do you like this one? Well, you know, I'm, a, I'm a big believer of diversification, so I really do like the agricultural sector in general, just because you know it is a good at hedge in a rising inflation environment. And if you look at you know things on a relative performance basis, you know ADM is up over 23% for the year. You compare it to you know more like long duration assets, you know more like the tech sector, you know it's up only about 7% for the year. So you know, you really start to see some of that some of that turnover as it relates to the overall portfolio. You know, more of these inflationary protected stocks are going to start to to start to take off. And then also you have on your list Enbridge. Yep. So Enbridge is a, is is in the energy sector. You know, again, I like the energy sector. It's a good inflation hedge. You know, you're looking at the, the price of oil right now. You know, we're pushing seventy four dollars a barrel it could very well go to one hundred this year. Um, again, a very good hedge against inflation. You know, I like the whole sector. You know, in our own personal portfolio, we own a, uh, a portfolio of oil and natural gas pipelines. Um, it's one of our best performers this year. So I think just that sector in general is a very good thing to own in your portfolio, especially as we start to see more inflation here. And then I, I think retail has been such an interesting story. We've had a very strong consumer in some cases for the luxury stocks, even during the pandemic, now people get to go back to the stores. Louis Vuitton is a name that you like, right? They have Moet, Hennessy, LVMH, really. Um, tell me about this one. Well, you know, everybody loves that Louis Vuitton bag. And, you know, if you just look at consumer prices right now, it's up over 5% over the past 12 months. You know, so things are getting more expensive. You know, coupled with the fact that, you know, as I mentioned before, we are seeing wage inflation. People have cash on the sidelines from stimulus, uh, people have saved a tremendous amount of money over the last year. So, you know, people are going out and they're buying stuff. I mean, they're buying luxury items. Uh, and Louis Vuitton is a great example of that. Mm. And then in the final thought here is we're waiting on the banks. We'll have some stress tests. We're getting FedEx. Um, you have the NASDAQ 100 at a new high. You have Microsoft hitting, you know, two trillion in market cap. People are, are excited about what they're seeing when they're seeing names like, you know, Google and Facebook, Adobe. Generac all hitting new highs. Um, you know, where do we go from here? How, what's your real outlook? Are you mostly bullish still? Yeah, I, I am bullish. I, I'm not necessarily bullish on the big tech trade. You know, I feel like that ship has really sailed. You know, that was the darling of last year. You know, I think now as we start to see some sector rotation, I'm more bullish on things like hard assets, things like commodities, pipelines, um, you know, anything that's value based, anything where that pays a good dividend that can pass on the price increases of inflation to their customer. Were you a buyer of Bitcoin when it was uh, at 30,000 or under that level? No, I was, I was not a buyer of Bitcoin. I think uh, my opinion of Bitcoin is that it's, it's, it's basically a casino and is, in fact, not a hedge against inflation. Ah, all right. I'm glad I asked that question, Chris. Good to see you. <laughs> it looks like Thank you're you, in Nicole. an office and there are people. Things are coming back together. Chris Payne, great to see you. 
Financial Advisor, Payne Capital Management. Thanks.